Good morning. Welcome back. Have you ever had one of those days when you got done putting your makeup on and then you look and you're like, this just doesn't look right. Something's wrong. Why is it not looking the way that it should? Well, today I'm going to give you some of my favorite tips that help me when I put my makeup on so that it looks the best that it possibly can. So if that sounds good to you, I do hope that you will watch the video all the way through because I got good tips all the way up until the end. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and share it with a friend. And if you are a returning viewer, I appreciate you so much for joining me today and supporting my channel. With that, let's get started. Tip number one, always prep your skin. And that means in the morning when you're putting your makeup on, make sure your skin is freshly cleansed, make sure it's exfoliated, and make sure it's hydrated. One of my favorite moisturizers is the CeraVe, and I will always hydrate my skin. And I've already hydrated my skin once today, but it's been a while. I actually had a doctor's appointment, went for my yearly physical, and they took a lot of blood, did EKG and everything, and they said everything looked perfect, so that's good. And I will hydrate my skin. Very good. One of the other things that I do, and I have severely, whoops, I'm going to get my hair that I just washed all full of moisturizer. <laughs> my skin is severely dry, so what I will do is I will go back in and put an oil. Now, this is just the Purador Organic Rosehip Oil. I use Argan Oil. There are several different oils that I use. I even use castor oil, and mostly that's at night. And I will hydrate my skin. And one of the big areas that I hydrate a lot, I like to hydrate in my areas that I have lines and crevices. In there. But I hydrate under my eyes very, very well. Your eyes, ladies, the skin is thinner. And that's where you're going to see your expressions and stuff. And that's where you're going to get more of your fine lines and wrinkles. And you want to have that hydrated and plumped out. So anything that you put on your skin is not going to sink in there. If it's dry, you're going to put concealer, foundation, anything, and that's just going to suck right in there. And it's just going to cling to all those fine lines and wrinkles. So you don't want to have that happen. So you always want to make sure your skin is very hydrated. One thing I want to stress is that you always need to pick the best skincare and foundation for your skin type. I have severely dry skin, so I do a double hydration in the morning. If you have normal or oily skin, you may not need to. You may just want to put hydration in your skin, like a hyaluronic serum and then a lightweight moisturizer. But just make sure your skin has hydration in it. That is very, very important. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have your sunscreen on. Now, there again, there are different sunscreens. Some sunscreens give you a matte finish, and they are a little bit more drying, so they're good for oily skin. Other ones are hydrating and they're better for dry skin. I love the Dermatology sunscreen. This is their physical tinted moisturizing sunscreen. So this has got moisturizer in it as well. So this is another layer of moisturizer for me. I like this because not only is it going to give me my SPF 44, but it's going to give me It's not working, is it? <laughs> a little bit of coverage and tint to my skin, which is nice. Now, I'm not saying I don't always wear tinted. I do not always wear tinted sunscreens. But the days that I do, it's nice because then when I go to put my foundation on, I already have a little bit of coverage on my skin so I can use less. And less is more. When you get older, you don't want to wear thick, heavy foundation and concealer and whatnot because it's just going to look it's going to look bad and it's going to settle into all your fine lines and wrinkles the next thing that you want to do step number three is always use thin layers always use thin layers you can add more but start out with less and when you do that you'd be surprised that you may not need as much as you think that you do and one of the things that helps out is using like a color corrector. This is a little bit of a peach color corrector. So I have, if I have a little bit of dark circles, I will very lightly just put a thin layer of color corrector under my eyes. Now, right there, you can see that that brightened up my eyes. So I'm not going to have to use 
as much concealer at all. Then I will go in with my foundation and I just put a little bit on my little palette here. And I always start out with just putting less on. And I'm pressing it and pulling it. Now normally I would wait a little bit because I do my eyes first normally. So my skin is super, super hydrated right now. I'm pressing and then pulling to shear it out. But by doing that, you can see it's a very natural finish. And the foundation that I'm using is the Revlon Illuminous. I love this foundation and it gives me, I'm super hydrated looking right now. That will change because as everything and all my moisturizers soak in, that will change. But it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look thick and heavy on my skin. Now, because I have color corrector under here, I'm not going to have to use as much concealer. And I'm going to take the smallest amount under my eyes. And if any of you have seen any of my get readies with me, you know I always do my eyes first, but I just wanted to show you this. This is more for your complexion right now. I am not going to need hardly any concealer under my eyes to correct that. And then I'm going to press it in. And you can see I've got great coverage, but it doesn't look thick and cakey. It doesn't look like it's going to settle into fine lines and wrinkles. So that is another step. That step of working in thin layers make a huge difference. And there's one thing that I did forget to tell you when I was talking about skin prep. Lips. And I always do this. I just forgot. Usually in the morning, right after I wash my face, before I start everything, I will put a lip balm on and let that start soaking in. So by the time I get all my makeup on and then I'll go eat breakfast and whatever and brush my teeth, my lips are still hydrated enough so my lipstick looks a little bit better because I have super dry lips. Super dry lips. Okay, so... That is done. Now the next thing that's a big controversy is powder. Do you powder or do you not powder? Um, I use, my favorite powder is the um, Makeup Forever HD powder. But I brought some other things up with me today and I just grabbed this. This is the number seven and I do hope it's still available. I know some people were talking about it might be discontinued. But when I do powder, I take a small fluffy brush like this, get a small amount and you can see I tap off. And again, less is more. You're very, very lightly just going to press. And I, this is a funny thing to do, but go, because by doing that, you can see any of, we're here. When you do, it makes the skin go down a little bit, and then you can press the powder in there to set it so it doesn't end up in those fine lines and wrinkles. And then again, I always press it in to make sure. So using powder, you want to use something, you want to use minimal amount, just enough to set it. You don't want to, I know baking was huge where people were just baking their face and putting it on and letting it set and, and then brushing it off the excess. And I've said this before, when my daughter got married in August, that's what they did to my face. And I, and I tried to tell her, no, no, no. Powder is not good for me. And she was putting a ton of powder on and then brushing it off. And I'm like, because she wanted the makeup to stay. I would rather use a good primer and I would rather use a good setting spray. And that is something else that you can add to your skin prep is a primer. 
And if you are adding a primer to your skincare, which I do, I don't every day wear a primer. If I know I'm going to be having a long day, I will put a primer on my skin. And a lot of times in the summertime I do because it helps it hold a little bit better. If you're going to, make sure you get the primer. If you're dry skin, get a hydrating one. If you're oily and you want one to mattify and to get rid of pores, make sure you do your due diligence in checking what you're buying to make sure that it matches you and matches your skin tone, skin texture, skin concerns. You want to make sure that it matches what you need because if you don't, then it's not going to work and you're going to have problems. So always read what things have in them. And one of the things that I do read is I try to find things without talc in them because talc just isn't the greatest for you, number one, and it is very drying. So I don't use it on my skin. Now, some of the other areas that sometimes I will powder and I always tap off. I will do my nose because my nose sometimes looks shiny. And I'll do just on the outside edges of that. Very, very lightly. Tap off. And sometimes I do right above here and here. Because I don't want those to look shiny. Because shiny will accentuate. And then we press in. Sometimes shiny does accentuate your pores and, and lines and stuff, so you don't want to do that. But now, you can't tell that I have powder on, and it still looks nice and smooth and fresh. But by using a minimal amount, making sure you tap off and then just lightly, you know, just press it in, and then take a sponge and make sure it's all pressed in nice it's going to make a big difference. So using powder the right way, strategically, just put it where you need it. Don't go all over if you don't need it all over. You don't need to do that. If you have an oily T-zone and you need to powder up here, go for it. Powder there. If you need some slight, if you have really oily skin and you need some slight powder everywhere, you can. Take a big fluffy brush, brush in, Tap off your excess and just do a thin layer, but you don't want to put a ton of it all over. That look of the big, the dry, baked look is out right now. What is in is more of a satin finish. Not super shiny, not matte and just dry and cakey looking, but a satin finish. And that's where you're going to get that if you just put a small amount on and then press it in. And always make sure you put that small amount on and then just press it in so it looks flawless makes a big difference. Moving on to eyes. One of the things that I will never ever skip is an eye primer. It makes all the difference in the world. And I will show you right now. I just, I just grabbed any old eye primer that I have. I have several of them and I'm going to put some on the back of my hand. Okay. And I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so I have eye primer, like right here. Then I'm going to take some eyeshadow. I brought a brush up. And I'm going to put some eyeshadow right over where it is, which I did right here. And then I'm going to put it right below without any. And I don't know if you can see the difference in the two colors. The one on the top is where I have the eye primer, and this one I don't. Now, this is just a, a light color that you use maybe in your crease or something. But the other thing is, throughout the day, you know, your eyes moving and everything, and your oils and everything that you have, this one on the bottom, if your eyes continually open and close, it's going to be gone. This one on the top... It's going to stay. I put eye primer on my eyes every day, and I will tell you, my eyeshadow stays on amazingly. It stays on all day. And I've tried different primers, and I, you know, ones some work and some don't, and I get rid of the ones that don't. And I showed you my one of my favorite ones is um, this Yate one. I love Urban Decay's um, eye primer. There are several that I love. I love um, Sigma, their primer sticks. I love those. It makes a huge difference. It makes your eyeshadows come true to color. It also helps them stay on all day. And it makes a huge difference. 
So eye primer is something that is going to, if you put your makeup on and halfway through the day, your eyeshadow just looks like it's gone. Or if you have oily lids and it's all like right here in the crease, it's because you didn't put primer on. If you have oily lids, it is super, super important that you wear an eye primer just to help. If you don't have any eye primers, you can take a concealer, put a concealer on really lightly in a thin layer and then lightly powder it and then go on and put your eyeshadow on and it'll do the same thing. It helps that. That's what my daughter does. She doesn't buy eye primer. She just uses concealer, puts a thin layer of concealer on and then primes. And a lot of people do that and that's fine. But you're prepping and priming your eyes so your eyeshadow will go on better. It's going to blend better. It's going to stay on and it's going to look truer colors. That is a must. So that is tip number five. Tip number six is blend, blend, blend. Final tip, whatever you are doing, you need to blend. Whether you're doing eyeshadow, whether you're doing blush. If I took, let me just grab, I'll grab a blush right here. Okay, say I have a, a blush. And this is sort of an exaggeration, but I did this on my cheek. Okay, I've got my blush on. Looks sort of silly, doesn't it? To go someplace and just, oh, you got your blush on. You want to make sure, and there's a lot on there, so it might be hard to get this to blend out, but whether it was blush or contour or whatever, but take the time to blend that out. And what a difference. What a difference that makes when you blend it out. I mean, it's the same thing with eyeshadow. If you were going to take, give me some eyeshadow and just go, okay. I got my eyeshadow in my crease. There you go. What do you think of it? No, it's going to look terrible. You've got to take the time. Oh, I can't find my big. big one. To blend, blend, blend. What a difference. Blending your makeup makes a huge difference. If you were going to put a contour and a blush there, you want to make sure that they're seamlessly blended together. You want to make sure your foundation is blended. You want to make sure everything is blended. It makes such a huge difference. And that's going to be, that's going to be your finishing touch. Just to make sure everything is blended and then go back and you're going to press around the edges so that blend is even more fine-tuned around the edges. So it just looks seamless like it's part of your skin because that's what you want to look you don't want to look like you've got lines of blush and lines of eyeshadow and just made up you want it to look natural on your skin contours I always contour but I always try to make sure it's blended in you don't want to have like a big brown line here and big brown lines here on the side of your nose I mean that would just look ridiculous if you blend it in it's going to look like a shadow and it's going to make a huge huge difference so those are my six tips. Make sure you prep your skin, which means everything from your skin to your lips to your eyes, everything. Just make sure everything is hydrated and ready to go. Put your sunscreen on. Make sure your sunscreen and your prepping is based on your skin type. Work in thin layers. Start out thin. You can always build if you need a little bit more coverage, but always start out thin. Color corrector concealer, foundation. Actually, I do color corrector, foundation, and then concealer if I still need it on top of that. Minimal powder and in strategic places. Make sure you're only putting it the places you need. Don't go overboard with it because it's, especially if you have normal to dry skin, it's just going to look dry. And even if you have oily skin, if you put too much of it on and then your oil starts seeping through, it can make it look gummy. I mean, I've seen it where people just try to really overcompensate. And then as the oils come through, then it just, it, it doesn't, it's not a pretty picture, not a pretty picture at all that you don't want to see. And make sure you're using eye primer, prime your lids and everything. So you're, whether you're just wearing one and done, put it on, put the primer on your eyes, put like a concealer and maybe powder because it's going to brighten up your eyes. You can see I have a pink tint to my eyelids because of my veins. Prepping your eyes with either a tinted primer or a concealer will make a big difference. It's going to even it out. And even if you just want to do that and some powder and then do your mascara and eyeliner or whatever, 
your eyes are going to look a lot better and your makeup is going to look a lot better if you don't see the veins and the different coloring discolorations and everything. And blend, 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 blend. That's the word of the day, ladies, blend. Make sure you do that. And I think your makeup will turn out just so much more better and I think you'll really enjoy the way that you look. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I do hope again, if you are new here and you haven't already, that you will hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and share this with a friend. Go out, have yourself a wonderful blessed day, and I will see you again in my next video.